Hey there everyone, my name is Andrew and this is Canadian Starships. Welcome back to update number 8 on the 1000 scale galaxy class project. Things are moving along now, it's been a long time since the last update. Well, with the craziness going on in the world, with Omicron all over the place, uh, supply delays and the holidays and kids not being in school, you know, it takes a while to get through the work. But it is my goal to make sure that in this update, you will see the secondary hall go together. Now, what does that mean? It means that I'm gonna have to make some serious decisions about the wiring inside the ship and what circuits things are gonna be on. I have to get the deflector dish lighting in, the photon torpedo launching uh, LED in. I've gotta get the nacelles wired, ready to go, because all that's gonna be inside the secondary hall and everything needs to be coming up the neck before I close up the two sections. So, we are going to get right at it. But before we get started, why not take a moment and click the subscribe button. And while you're here, click on that notification bell so you don't miss a single video. Now that I know how many circuits are going into the ship, I've run the wires through the T-junction at the bottom into the brass tube and out into the ship. We have seven colored wires that are going to be the data cables from the Arduinos and we've got four sets of red and black wires that are going to be power sources for the model. Now I need at least two of those to run everything but I've run four of them just to have the backup in case because once this is all closed off there's no way to get additional wires into the ship. Now these white and yellow the wire here they are going to be running up the armature to the saucer because they're going to be controlling the phaser array. The next thing I need to do is take this big mess of wires down here and connect them to the um, jumper cables that will just pin directly into the Arduino. That's going to make working with everything a lot more simple. I'll just be able to plug them in and out of the Arduino. It's also going to make things super easy for the client to set this up once it gets to its final d destination. For example, the orange wire will just plug into pin number five, for example. I don't know what pins are going to be, but it'll be as easy as that in the instructions. So that's what I'm gonna do now, get all of that wired up, and it's gonna be super easy for me to do all my lighting testing and uh, running everything during installation for test runs, if I can set it up where I just plug in these wires and there's lots of length on them in order to get them to the Arduino board. As you can see, I've attached all of these jumper wires to the wires going into the ship and that makes them really easy just to connect to a breadboard or the Arduino board. Now the breadboard I've got sitting here isn't actually doing anything. It's just here for demonstration purposes, just to show how easily everything connects. My next step is to get the smart LEDs that are going to go on the spine of the inside of the secondary hull wired up and let them do a 24 hour test run. Here we have the first smart LED strip wired up for the window lighting on the inside of the ship. And this one is going to be going on the spine on the top section of the secondary hull. It's connected right now to the breadboard, connected to the Arduino. And I'm gonna let that run for about 24 hours so it gets a good stress test. That way, if there's any defect in the LED strip, it should show up in that first 24 hours. Now, while that's running, I'm also going to work on getting the LED strips for the warp nacelles wired up. That way I can also just clip them into the breadboard and they can start their 24 hour test while this is running, which I think is a good use of my time. So I've run the LED strips for 24 hours and they have worked perfectly flawlessly. However, we've kind of discovered a bit of an oddity with the Arduino. And I did some troubleshooting with Danny, the programmer, and we've discovered that the Arduino is happiest when it's being powered by the five volt USB. Right now I'm running off of the nine volt wall adapter plug, which should be perfectly fine. But as you can see, the lights are flickering and I'm not sure how this is going to translate on video. It's very pronounced in person. And on the screen as I'm watching it on, on the camera, it is pulsing, but it, it, it is so much more prevalent in person and that's no good but let me switch over to the usb 5 volt and show you the difference and here we go with the 5 volt usb power source it's just running through my phone charger 
which is rated for five volts, two amps, and everything is completely, perfectly stable. And it was stable, not a flicker for the full 24 hour test. So that means that we are gonna be switching the power system on the ship completely over to a five volt system. The one thing I'm gonna to have to adjust that's already been installed into the ship are the 0402 SMDs. I'm gonna to have to remove the 22K resistors that I have put onto the negative side. I'm gonna to need to replace those with 12. I did try an 8K2 resistor uh, in testing first and it was a little bit too bright, so I backed it off to a 12K resistor, and it looks pretty much perfect. You don't want them to be blaringly bright. You want them to show up, but not cast a whole bunch of light. So I'm gonna have to switch all of those over because they are already installed in the ship. So that is gonna be my next course of action. But it's so curious that it doesn't like the nine volt power source it is much happier with the USB five volts coming in, which means we're just gonna be changing the entire um, power source setup for this project. But we're not too far in to the project for that to be a problem. With the LED sorted out and the wiring installed into the model, my next step is to start working on consolidating down the wires for the warp nacelles to the appropriate feeds coming into the ship. You can see that I've got one here done, and essentially these have just been soldered together and to the main lead coming in from the base, and they split out going to each nacelle. This particular one is going to be the data cable for the warp chiller grills, which um, since warp chiller grills are blue, I chose the blue color just helps keep everything straight in my head and I am marking down what color is for what effect or what LEDs. I am going to have make use of all six wires going into the nacelles. The other blue is going to be the data cable for the Buzard collectors and then we are going to have a red and black for the power for the chiller grills and the Bussards and then we are gonna have a red and black that is going to run the flashers on the ends of the warp nacelles. So those are going to be all consolidated down to their main leads or a uh, line coming off of one of the main leads. The I've decided that the warp nacelles for the chiller grills and the bussards are going to have their own power line running down to the base. That way when the uh, warp engines go into warp and they suddenly draw a whole bunch of power. It's not going to affect any of the other um, effects or lighting on the ship. All of the wires that I can get consolidated and kind of buckled down have been. You can see that I have taken power for the navigation lights that don't blink directly off of the LED strips, which is just a handy way to keep all of the wiring under control. And if I move up to the bottom section of the secondary hall, you can see that most of the wiring that can be consolidated has been consolidated. I've added LED lights onto the side of the post mount just to give a little bit of extra light in the front section of that secondary hall. And I've also used those strips to steal power for the navigation lights in the back. That way I'm not having to have wires connected to both halves of the ship before I close it up. That's gonna make connecting the two halves of the ship a lot easier to do. I've got the LEDs installed onto the back of the deflector dishes. If you see any flickering, it's just because the bare wires are connected directly to the breadboard and that doesn't necessarily give the best connection. The LEDs have been completely sealed in with epoxy. I'm gonna give that a shot of white primer before it gets installed in the ship. And that's all that's left to do before it gets attached to the bottom section of the secondary hull and the wiring gets hooked up. Once that's done, the two halves of the secondary hall can go together. 
Sometimes it's one step forward and two steps back with this type of thing, and that's definitely the case with the deflector dish. I forgot that I needed to at least install a data output on this because it's also going to be driving the Buzard collectors and the impulse engine. And there was no way that I could simply install the output wire after this had been epoxied in place. Trust me, I tried no chance so i had to completely tear off the led strip and wire up a brand new one epoxy in place so that has been done what i'm going to do next is i'm going to just add some light blocking paint probably some tulip black around here and then it's going to be installed into the ship after it's installed in the ship i'm going to wire everything else up from this well i've got the deflector dish installed it is epoxied in place and I had to rig up a little bit of a setup with elastic bands in order for these clamps to actually grab a hold of something. This is such an odd shape for being able to clamp things down. So the elastic band that is on the deflector is there to give those clamps something to grip to. And then I've got to have another elastic pulling in on those clamps so that they don't slide or move anywhere. But this has had probably almost 24 hours in place epoxy down i'm going to remove the clamps and hopefully this thing is nice and solid the next thing i have to do is get the wires in behind here for the leds wired up to the system i need to pull the green wire that's going to the buzzards because it's going to go to the deflector dish first and then that's going to split off to the buzzards and to the impulse engines and there we go the clamps are off and if i'm if I wiggle this, it looks like we did indeed get a really nice, good, secure, tight bond on the deflector dish. So I'm going to go ahead and start working on getting this wired up. And once that's wired up, I think we're pretty much ready to seal up. Although I might need to install the LED for the photon launcher before I seal up the secondary hull. So before I get this part sealed on top of the bottom of the secondary hull, I need to decide what I'm going to do about the Photon Torpedo Launcher and the option I thought I was probably going to go with was a standard 3mm LED which would go right into the Torpedo Launcher here, just grind out this area, but I think that if I make some modifications to this 5mm Smart LED that is addressable, programmable, and if I get it to go in there and I taper the end of it just the right way, this might be the way to go. So I'm going to work on getting this ground down, see if I can get it uh, into the shape that will nicely go right up as close to the photon launcher port as possible and see if I can get that installed because that's going to make life a lot easier if it'll work. Now in order to get the LED into the top section of the secondary hull, I need to remove a lot of the resin from the next section where the torpedo launcher is. So I have the appropriate grinding bit on my new cordless Dremel, which is working so much easier. I don't have to worry about the wire in the way. And I am just very slowly and methodically removing the material from this section and testing the fit on the LED. Big moment here, the top of the secondary hull is attached to the bottom of the secondary hull. Now, you can see that it's clamped down in position at the moment. Getting those clamps on there was um, really quite troublesome because the shape of this ship does not really allow for clamping. So I've got sandpaper back to back so that there's sandpaper on the model, sandpaper on the clips, and it's giving enough traction for the clips to be able to hold in place. So that's gotta sit there for quite some time in place so that it gets completely secured down. This is a critical moment in the build. The LED is now prepared to be wired up to the wiring inside the ship. What I've done is I've trimmed down the LED casing to a point on the end and that's going to fit nicely into the area that I have uh, routed out of the model part itself. And the orange wire inside the ship, you can see there. So the orange wire right here is going to be connected to pin number four on the LED and the torpedo 
LED is the only LED that's going to be on this particular data wire from the Arduino board. So it's going to go directly to the LED. I'm going to grab power for the LED off of the yellow banded power. So here's the ground for it. And here is the uh, positive wire. So they will be trimmed off. They'll be uh, they'll have a, a Y connected so that the power can continue going on and power will go to the LED. And that's it. It's going to be hooked up to power and to the orange data cable. Then it's going to be nestled inside here and it'll be positioned so that you can see the light very nicely out of the area that is just masked off there, the little square part that's masked off. And that'll be the only part that will shine bright red. Or you could actually program it to shine green if you if it's in pork invasion mode or anything like that because it's the Arduino and it's programmable. I'm prepping the photon torpedo LED to be installed. Each of these legs has shrink tube over it to protect it. This, the yellow is the data in, the black is the ground and the red is the positive and then there's the fourth pin on here which is the data out but we're not going to be using that because it's going to be the only led in the line then i'm going to jack the entire section right about there with this larger piece of shrink tube and that will light block everything and contain the pin we're not using so i'm going to put this over top hit it all with the heat gun, and then this LED will be ready to be installed into the Photon Torpedo Launcher. And there we have it. The LED is installed. It's fully epoxied in place. It is aimed quite nicely, and it is working. So that is the secondary hull assembly done. Uh, there are some gaps here where it's separated, so I need to clean out some of the epoxy, put some fresh stuff in, and really clamp that down. I'll probably do that one side at a time just so that I can really get my hands on it that time because it's really a pain trying to clamp it down. So there's some of that work to be done. I'm not going to be worrying about all the filler and detail stuff until I've got more of it assembled and I can really kind of go through it and work on, on that. But that's good. That is a great place to end this update with a little bit of fancy lighting. And that's going to be it for this update on the 1000 scale Galaxy Class project. The thing is, together, there is work to be done, but the engineering hall, secondary hall, is together with all of that lighting, wiring, and all that stuff inside. And that is a huge step forward in progress. You know, we had delays, had to wait for LEDs, what with supply shortages and craziness in shipping right now. But I am super excited with the progress that's been done. So I hope that you've really enjoyed this update. If you did, make sure that you hit that like button. If you're new to my channel or you haven't done so yet, why not hit that subscribe button today? We are on our way to 1,000 subscribers for the 1,000 scale Galaxy class project. That is super exciting. But for now, my name is Andrew and this is Canadian Starships. Have a great day, everyone.